You start the car, switch on the lights. Simple acts with costly consequences. Our colleague Robert Krolwich is back this morning to take us on an animated journey back in time. Imagine a house, a normal house, with the usual appliances, dishwashers, refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, and of course an electricity bill which comes every month. Now we're going to make this a Kentucky home because in Kentucky they get almost all their energy from coal. And since we all know that coal is a fossil fuel, here's an idea. Let's go back and meet the fossils who died to light up this house. Well, we're going to have to go way, way back to the Carboniferous period. That's about 300 million years ago. And this here is a typical forest from that time. And this is a typical tree called a Lepidodendron. Long, skinny little tree. They sprout it up as plants do, soaking in sunshine, absorbing carbon from the air so they could grow and grow and grow. And then, of course, they died to be replaced by another set of lepidodendrons that also grew and died, another that grew and died, and another that grew and died. So after millions and millions of years, the layers of all these dead plants press down one on top of the other, concentrating all that ancient carbon and ancient sunshine into a hard black rock that we call coal. So, just for the fun of it, let's say our house here in Kentucky uses roughly a thousand kilowatt hours of coal-powered electricity in a month. That's about average. Can we figure out how many of those ancient trees are in effect being harvested to power this home for one month? Well, it turns out that a thousand kilowatt hours, that's the electricity bill, comes from burning about a half ton of coal, which is the energy equivalent of two ancient trees, each one about 60 feet high. So that is what this home is burning every month, two old trees worth of carbon. Now, if we go for a year of electricity, that would be 24 of these trees. And then over a decade, over 10 years, we're up to 240 trees. And now you've kind of used up a mini forest of ancient energy just to power your home. And that does not include, by the way, the family car. Now, cars, we all know, also use fossil fuels. Gasoline does come from oil, and oil comes from, once again, ancient plants. But not trees this time, no, no. Uh, oil comes from much, much teenier plant-like creatures, so small you can't see them with your eyes. But you do find them in the ocean, drifting about and rolling around, using sunshine to absorb carbon and grow and multiply. There are trillions, actually, a thousand trillion trillion of these teeny plants in the sea. They're called phytoplankton. They're the basic food of the ocean, eaten by little guys and the big guys. And a hundred million years ago, there were phytoplankton living in the oceans. And when they died, and their babies died, and the babies of those babies died, the ocean bottoms were gradually littered with sunshine-rich remains creating a layer of stored carbon that under pressure from the mud above and the heat below, compressed first into rock and then, under even greater pressure, turned into a black liquid that we now call oil. So, today, when you pump a gallon of gasoline into your car, you are mostly pumping the squeezed remains of countless ancient microplants into your car engine. Well, actually, no, they're not really countless because we can count them based on their carbon content. So we calculate that when you turn on the engine and step on the gas and go, for every inch of highway, you are crunching 20 billion <laughs> ancient plants through your car engine. That is 20 billion for every highway inch. So if your grandma lives a mile down the road, that works out to 1,200 trillion plants given up their energy to move you to grandma's, who, when she turns on the lights to say hi, she's using energy from ancient trees. So we are constantly using carbon that's been locked in the ground for millions of years, digging it up and putting it back to work, well, for you and for me. We today are ravenous for old sunshine, so much so that if you add up all the coal and all the oil and all the natural gas that we humans use to power our lives in just one recent year, we'll choose the year 2018, 
And then think just for a second of all the ancient organisms that had to get squished down to make those fossil fuels. So that would be the old Carboniferous trees and the Carboniferous plants and the phytoplankton and ancient plant eaters, the little ones and the big ones in the sea, on the land. All those old organisms that got crunched into fossil fuels, if you drop all that old life into the container that we call Earth and burn them, it turns out that what we burn in one year weighs a hundred times more than everything alive today. Everything. All the living whales and the elephants and the forests and insects and grass and crops and birds and fish and people, dogs and cats, add up all the carbon in everything alive now and still, in one year we burned a hundred times more. Or to put it another way, we humans gobbled up 100 Earth's worth of ancient life. That's 55 trillion tons of ancient carbon in a single year. That's a lot of fossil fuel and we are using it up very, very fast.